Hey, what's up, Liron here. Today, you're gonna learn how to truly mix a dark value in watercolor. This is gonna be a fairly beginner-oriented video, which I've been wanting to do for a while now. Go back to the basics, go back to the fundamentals. I do want to go into a few more details. So when we're talking about the value we mix, we're, we're discussing really the, the technique, the very basic technique of handling paint on the palette, mixing it with water, all of those good stuff. Before we get to technique, I do want to talk about courage, though, because some people cannot mix a dark value because they just lack the courage or experience to do so. So it's not so much a technique that blocks them from doing that. It's more of an approach thing. And for those people, I will just encourage you um, to to try this out, okay? Try this out on a separate piece of paper, not on a painting you've invested yourself into, but something separate where you can just figure out how to do it and make sure that that you're you're able to do it in in kind of a vacuum way okay now if we do talk about technique one thing to note is that the paint is gonna look different on the palette compared to what it looks like uh, on paper so when you see the paint here right there's a lot of water on the palette and even if I pick up some and this is just um, neutral tint by Daniel Smith of course one of my favorite black colors even if I'll pick up a bunch of paint here and get it to almost look quite dark on the palette. Look at this here, right? This looks quite dark. Just a little dot that I have here. Uh, this little, little area. It looks quite dark. But in order to truly see what it looks like, you'll have to open it up on paper. So let me show you what I mean by that. This color, it is dark, right? But it's not black. Now it might look black on the palette. Let's add a bit more to the mix here, right? Let's let's use this large mix, okay? So what I'm mixing looks almost, you know, like a black color, but again, once you open it up on a large enough of an area, it's not black. To get it truly black, you'll have to, to work a little harder, okay? Now that's a black paint. That's closer to black. Of course, we're not talking about in terms of perfect black, but just something that reads as, as a black, as a full dark color. There are some nuances in that too. But so we talk about courage and we talk about the paint looking different on the palette. You really have to open it up on paper. Now, one more thing that you have to take into consideration if you've ever painted watercolor, you know this, sorry for my phone ringing. Um, the paint will dry lighter. So when you see this value, the more the video go, moves on, and I have a time lapse, I believe, to share with you, um, the more time passes, what looks to be a mid value, right, or even a dark value, will end up looking quite light. So that's another thing you have to take into consideration. Now, if we go back to technique for a moment, what I often see with people, especially really beginner students, uh, but sometimes advanced, like if you've been painting for a year, you may still be making this mistake, is very timid when it comes to picking up the paint from the palette. So I see some, some people working with the edge of the brush and, and I tell them to mix a dark value and they go like this. Dark enough? Is this is this okay? And I'm like, nope. They, they go even more into the well and it's like, it's not enough. Sometimes you have to dig into the well fearlessly. You pick up the paint, you pick it up, okay? Now there is some nuance there as well. But look at how much darker and faster it gets my mix, right? Uh, the nuance is the harder the paint dries, the more obviously you will need to dig into the palette, okay? Now, the softer the paint is naturally. So something like M. Graham paints, with, which have a bit of honey in them, they, they dry a little wetter. Even when they're fully dried, or they're, they re-wet a little easier. You won't have to dig as much. Uh, or take, for example, a paint fresh from the tube. Right? If you dig into that, your entire brush is just going to pick it up like toothbrush. You don't want that to happen. So you have to be aware of the colors themselves, and this will come naturally with time. So for me, for example, I know that phthalo blue here will pick up very easily. I don't need to do much, right? It dries fairly, um, it re-wets fairly easily. I don't know if it dries softly, but it, I know it re-wets easily. Uh, whereas... Uh, if I were to grab something like a sap green, right? So I need a bit more 
right? A bit more strength to pick up a, a, a very strong value. So don't be scared when necessary to dig into the well. You really have to do this sometimes. Now, one quick tip to help you is if you have a lot of paints that um, dry very hard on the palette, and this is often the case with cheaper brands, what you can do is just use a water sprayer spray all of your paints this is a very beginner advice but again this is a very beginner video it's important to go back to the fundamentals just spray over all your paints and they will automatically while you're mixing while you're doing stuff will begin to re-wet because you're covering everything with a layer of water and this is something i discovered a few months and in, months into watercolor and it could have helped me a lot sometimes i'm not disciplined enough to remember doing it in the beginning but it really is great help if all your paints are freshly squeezed you don't need that but if you're working like most people with paints that already dried on the palette or you're working with pens right not tubes that you squeeze into the palette same story. Some pens re-wet easier, some aren't as easy to re-wet. You have to use a water spray to kind of wake it up or dig into the well. Don't be scared to do that, okay? Now, the last point I will talk about is the difference in pigments. Some pigments are just naturally lighter while others are naturally darker. So the easiest example is a yellow. Let's just pick up a ton. I'm digging into this well with a fairly not too wet brush, right? I'm digging digging, look at what I'm producing here. In essence, it'll be able to be as dark as what you're seeing on the palette, which is not that dark. Now, let me switch over to a Pyrrol Scarlet, all by Daniel Smith here. Pyrrol Scarlet, see, it's definitely darker, and you can tell if your eye is trained enough. But let's move on to Quinacridone Rose, which is why I love this paint, and it's very useful. Aside from being a magenta, which is more useful sometimes for mixing, Look at how much darker it is naturally compared to, it's not a huge difference, but it is there. The difference exists compared to Pyrrol Scarlet, right? Again, this is as dark as Pyrrol Scarlet gets. This is as dark as uh, Quinacridone Rose will get. Now let's switch over to Halo Blue. You might've guessed it. Look at that, right? Look at how dark it is. Now let's switch over to Carbazol Violet. Carbazole Violet, in its essence, is a black. <laughs> it's a violet black. It really is. It's one of my favorite. Oops. It's one of my favorite paints to use um, uh, whenever I need to quickly mix darks, but I want them to have some depth of color and hue and not just be, you know, a, a gray uh, black color. It's it's a it's an accelerator. You can mix it with a yellow and achieve very good darks. Um, so. This is really it. Now, as a small kind of point to wrap it up, some people have trouble with yellows because they think to themselves, okay, yellows just aren't dark enough, so it's very hard for me to have them compete with the rest of the paints. And this goes into a bit mixing black paint, but I want to show you how if you bring in a bit of thalo blue, for example, and, and quinacridone rose, magenta, right? You get a purple. You could even use the violet directly. If you bring in enough of the yellow, it will gray out. Um, I think in a satisfying manner, right? And, and you just need to bring enough of it. So you don't need all of the paints you're mixing to have the same strength of value naturally out of the tube. Um, they still can mix well and, and evenly. I'm not sure how that works, but it actually works, okay? Maybe because it's harder to recognize those nuances in the darkest darks, but it just works. So don't worry too much about that. So just to conclude, Maybe it's an issue of courage, and if, if it's you, then that's something just to, to get rid of once. Just do this once on a, on a spare, uh, isolated piece of paper. Feel what it's like to mix a very dark value once, and you will solve it for life. So that's the first thing. Second, paint on the palette may look darker than it actually is, may look lighter than it actually is. The only way to know is to test it on the paper. I use test paper all the time to test my paint before I apply it to my actual finished painting. Uh, next up, uh, the paint will dry lighter. So over the course of this video, you're seeing these paints dry and they become significantly lighter. And then don't be scared to dig into the well, really dig in. I want you to feel what it's, I almost want you to feel what it's, what it's like to dig too much and have your brush covered in paint and be disgusting. I want you to feel that. Uh, and then, Pigment differences. Some pigments are just naturally darker than others. So what does this tell you? Uh, what does this teach us? 
Maybe if you really are looking for a dark value with one paint, just switch it over. Don't use Pyro Scarlet, use Quinacridone Rose. Okay, just a few thoughts to throw at you. One more little kind of note to remember is that don't just look at the name of the paint. So uh, uh, neutral tint, uh, thalo blue, new gamboge, look at the pigment. The pigment is what matters and some brands will have a different name for the same pigment. So when I say quinacridone rose, what I actually mean is PV19, pigment violet 19. That's the one that's better to uh, for shading than uh, pyrrole scarlet, which is PR, I don't remember. No way I can remember that, okay? Uh, same goes for thalo blue, um, French ultramarine, look at the pigment and then you'll slowly learn and get to, exp but the best thing I can tell you honestly is just to, with time, become familiar with what you have on the palette, that way you'll get a, a really good feel to it. Your tools and mastering them is a part of producing something that looks good and, and more than looks good, that matches your intention, right? If you try to get a paint to be dark but you constantly fail at it, that's a gap in your skill that you want to solve right? Uh, so anyway, this is it. This is all I have for you today. I hope this was beneficial. I am trying to go back to the fundamentals and cover a bunch of topics that, that involve really the basics. I think it's very important and don't hesitate to revisit them if, even if you've been doing it for a while. Like the worst thing is to uh, be painting for five years and be completely oblivious to one thing that you're constantly uh, making a mistake on. A big part of a mistake is you not getting the result you want, right? I'm not talking about objectively this painting is good, this painting is bad. A lot of it is can you execute on your intentions and on your plan. That's pretty much it. So again, thank you so much for watching. I want to thank everyone who supports me over on Patreon. If you want to join, I have a link down below. And of course, uh, thank you so much for getting the courses, checking them out. If you want to paint loosely, enjoy the painting process, let go, let the paint do its thing, which is pure magic. Uh, check out the Frustration Free Watercolor course. Same goes for watercolor realism. If you want to achieve that realistic result, which involves a lot of creating the dark values as well. Uh, be sure to check that out and I will catch you in the next video. Until then, take care.